with me Come on and talk to me I really wanna know what you I swear to God, this might be the noblest of professions. Robin Williams had a bar that I loved. He said comedy is the only job you can have where you can use everything you know. And that's true. You can use more than you know. You can use what you think. Use it. Don't be afraid. Don't let these bitch ass niggas button your lip. <laughs> Say it anyway. Hey everyone, happy Thursday. Hope you guys are doing good. Thank you guys so much for joining me this evening. Y'all be having me dying in the chat with all the, the gifts and the memes and the dancing emojis. So thank you guys so much. It's a lot to talk about tonight and I wanna hear from y'all. It's a lot going on, especially in this world in general, but in the comedy community, a lot of conversations are being had. And a lot of these conversations have been had for the past few years. I've noticed it, but I've noticed a lot of things are getting worse. And after the little stunt that happened yesterday with T.I. and the female comedian Lauren Knight, um, I thought this would be a good episode to talk about all of this stuff. You know, we're living in such an overly sensitive world. There's a lot of PC culture. And now, you know, it seems like comedy is being greatly affected by this. So I want to go ahead and talk about that. But before I do, um, I want to play this video for you guys. It's funny. You guys just need to hear the audio. You don't need to necessarily need to see the visuals. But it's a young man. He's a comedian. His name is Long Beach Giffy. And he made this video back in 2018. Because I want to say that's really when this whole cancel culture. Oh, I'm a victim. You know, everybody's a part of the victim Olympics. You know, everybody wants to be a victim for something. And so I believe that it really took stronghold around 2017, 2018. And now we're in 2022. And, you know, things are just a mess at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and play this video for you guys. I want you guys to listen to this really quick. How you guys doing? Guys? Um, there are women in the audience as well. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Get them, okay. says. Guys, women. Okay. What about the transgender? Y'all too. Everybody. Y'all and everybody are not the correct pronouns to address someone. Exactly. Okay. Human. Not a pronoun. I hope you have a daughter someday and someone calls her a human. You transphobic bigot. Okay, so this black guy walks into a bar. Was he discriminated against by institutionalized racism? Uh, no. So racism doesn't exist. I didn't say that. What you're not about to do, my brother, mm -hmm. is perpetuate a narrative that enables racism and gives them a reason to say racism is not real. Rich. I can't support someone who isn't racially biased like I am. My niggas not okay. white. Like. Did you just speak Spanish? Oh my God. He you're did. appropriating Latino culture. Mm -mm. <sighs> oh my God. Oh my God. He just did an exasperated gasp. That's hate speech. You sexist, racist, cool, asshole, bigot. Uncle Tom. I was just about to tell a joke. A joke! Oh, a joke! A joke! What? No. what? It's 2018. You can't tell jokes. Jokes are hate speech. Boycott Griffin. You're an insensitive asshole. Griffin. 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 We had Man. so much respect for you until you made a joke about something we were sensitive about. You should be ashamed. You should be ashamed. You are the problem. Okay, you're the problem. All right, so y'all just heard that. Now, he made that in 2018, okay? And it's so funny because, like I said, fast forward several years, and look where we're at now, where, I mean, it's literally a debate about this whole Will Smith thing. You know, was Chris Rock's joke too far? Was it, you know, just a regular joke? And, you know, I grew up in a different era where, you know, we grew up with roasting, your mama jokes. You couldn't even tell. I don't even think you can say your mama jokes anymore to kids on the playground. You know, because that's the thing that, that taught us to be witty. 
to know how to defend ourselves with words. But these kids are so sensitive now. It's just, it's really crazy. And it's like, you can just say something without meaning to offend and somebody will take offense to everything. And I just think it's just really sad. And, you know, my whole thing is this. At this point in time, I think what really happened is like around 2015, 2016, you had the whole anti-bullying initiative, right? So it was a lot of this, you know, we can't bully, bullying is not okay, which I agree with, you know, but when we were growing up, bullying was definitely a thing. I was definitely bullied, as were many of you guys here in the chat, but it also taught us to be stronger, and eventually we had to get up and deal with the bully. Sometimes you had to, you know, knock out one bully and it shut it up the rest of the bullies from picking on you. You know, that's the generation we come from. But I understand, you know, it's a different generation. So there's all this anti-bullying thing. Because remember, there's a lot of kids back then, you know, committing suicide on the internet and drinking bleach and, you know, all types of stuff. But I think at this point, it's anti-bullying gone awry. Some, for some reason, the whole anti-bullying situation, it ended up getting mixed in with the social justice situation. And now it's like we've gone down a slippery slope that I don't think we can climb back from. And I think this is really the nuances of everything. And like I said, I feel like at this point in time, we're all running this race of trying to see who's the winner in the victim Olympics everybody's a victim. And at some point in time, if we're all victims, then who the hell's the winner? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Who's going to win this race if everybody's a victim? If you can't say anything, you can't even correct people without being accused of shaming. And the thing that's really disturbing is that we now live in an age where people are not only offended by everything, but they are ashamed of nothing. And if you don't understand how bad that combination is, I don't know what to tell y'all. Am I preaching right now? Okay. People are offended by everything, yet and still ashamed of nothing. Okay, let me go ahead and start with Miss Scully B. Go ahead and unmute your microphone. Hey, you guys. Hey, T. Hey, how are you? I'm good. Sorry, I'm eating ice. So <laughs> if y'all hear me crunching and smacking, that's what it is. Um, I just wanted to say I'm with you on, um, on, you know, I grew up in, in a time where, you know, you could just, you could roast people as far as, you know, if they were bothering you or something like that. And now it's like, if you do that, you bullying them. Okay. So you're saying that back in your day, <laughs> you guys were able to roast people. Yeah, you know, and and I grew up being bullied too. You know what I'm saying? But I didn't, I didn't learn mm -hmm. how to um, combat that till maybe about middle school. You know, and it was wit mm -hmm. comedy. You know, and it's like now, you do you remember, um, like some years ago, um, they had the show on MTV called Your Mama. You remember that? Uh huh. Yeah. The matter of fact, the co-host on there, the black dude, Sam Spurpon. Mm -hmm. I was really cool with him in LA. He ended up committing suicide, unfortunately. But I was real cool oh, with him. Yep. So yep. Yeah, him and is. um Wilmer Valderrama. Yeah, they did that. Yeah, that was a whole show. Your mama, Tumadre, and all that stuff. Exactly. Remember that? That was one of my favorite freaking comedy shows. I think what perpetuated the bullying the most, though, really, is social media. Because mm. back in the day when we were younger and used to have to take, you know what I'm saying, people talking stuff about you, you could at least escape and get home and wouldn't right. have to pick up a device and have to mm -hmm. see that same person or, you know, bully or whoever the person was, you know, talking smack about you. And now you get to see it on this international platform. So then you have people from all over the world that they have a specific amount of followers, you know, then kind of jumping on there and getting to say whatever they want to say. So that does also make the situation even worse. So I kind of feel social media perpetuated bullying to another level. I just feel like they really took on like, um, not even saying the weakest links, but people that they thought they could just, uh, you know, get away with that. Like I said, if there was a, I'm thinking to myself, if there was a stronger comedian on the uh, Oscars, you know, up there like a Steve Harvey or J Dave Chappelle, 
I think uh, I think Will would have thought twice of even going up stay up up there. And then mm-hmm. with the same thing with Ti, was he hackling other guys? And there's a that's a woman. I the way he disrespected that girl and was so mm, how he talked to her and just was mm-hmm. yelling profanity to her. Again, another black woman that he was just doing like so down and nobody even defended the lady. Like all these bodyguards right. standing in front of right. the stage. Nobody's saying, hey, T- you know, calm down or just take the mic away from him. And it's just like, you know, <laughs> even as like a younger kid, me five years old playing in the YMCA. Oh, y'all lost. But here's these medals and you get to take a picture with the with the coach and we're going to take mm-hmm. you home and get some pizza. And then my mom was even like, what is she getting a trophy for? And she didn't win anything. Well, ma'am, nowadays, you know, <laughs> all of our kids are, they all succeed. And as long as they try, they're all winners. Best, I'm yeah. like, what? <laughs> Stacy said in the chat, they used to do that with honor roll too. Sure did. Oh, I would love when they had that list and have my name right up there. Such and such <laughs> made the be honor roll. Y'all see my name? I bring my friends. Y'all see my name? Uh, be honor roll. Where your name at? You yeah. know, that was, it was like a bragging right. But now it's like we shame kids for being smart. We shame kids for making the honor roll and getting good grades. But then we'll reward the kids who are out here doing, you know, just all types of reckless stuff. Exactly. It, it's sad. It's sad. But thank you so much for calling. It was good talking to you, sis. Thank you. Have a good one, everybody. People still right. talk. What? I'm out here. I'm out here living my life. Like, period. So I just don't understand. It's not the new generation. It's the parents of the new generation sitting here talking mm-hmm. about everybody needs a reward, everybody needs a this, and everybody needs a that. Because trust me, I'm around kids with psychiatric issues all day. These kids can ask like nobody else. Queer kids, straight kids, black kids, white kids. Right? Mm-hmm. It's, the, it's the idiot parents and the idiot school boards. Like, I'm queer. You, I'm not sitting here bothered over nobody making a gay joke. We cut ass just like everybody else. So I just don't understand. And, and what bothers me the most is that people can sit on the internet on this cancel stuff. But y'all know behind the scenes, y'all are making the same type of, nothing has changed. Mm-hmm. Comedy is not dead. You're just putting it in silence. And the problem with putting any type of situation in silence is that's where that actual bigot- bigotry and actual dangerous thinking festers and grows. Like, you no, I want you to wear your weirdo on the outside. I want you to be open and honest about who you are at all times because nothing that you say is gonna stop what's going on over here. I don't care. Right. So I just don't. And I'm glad you made that point. You know, like you said, you're LGBT and you can take a joke, but they make it seem like you know mm-hmm. all people who are LGBT are just so sensitive. You can't say anything, and it's like all my friends who are LGBT, they are the most roastingest, yes. and they got jokes about everybody. So they're like, who are all these sensitive people on Twitter? Because all my friends do is roast and gag and talk shit. And what, what's craziest to me is it be the straights, right? It's it's like that fake woke. Oh, you know. Oh, you can't say anything about black people. Meanwhile, black people don't care. You can't say anything about queer people. The mm-hmm. queer people don't care. And the actual biggest will sit here and attack us over stuff that the 2% of people at the very, very top are making rules about. Meanwhile, y'all aren't doing anything about the gay panic murder defense. Y'all aren't really doing anything that will actually really positively impact the gay community. You know why? Because you want to cancel the conversation. It was the jester. It was the jester, which brings me to another festivity that was back in the day. It was called, I think, the Day of the King or Day of the Mad King, whatever. It, you were taking the, the, the pissiest, drunkest mofo around, and you were putting him in the outfit of a king or a pope. Two people you could not disrespect back in the day. But once, once a year, you were allowed to. The population was going in on them. Because you need to, to let the population have a, a, a way to vent and let that steam go out uh, of the valve. Because if you don't, guess what happened? You and your queen might get your head chopped out. Okay? Mm-hmm. Shout out to friends. Bonjour. So, yeah, you need you to let the population. <laughs> I, I am. I am. Because <laughs> I hear that French accent. Bonjour. I am. Bonjour. Hello. Comment ça va? So. Comment tu Titi? <laughs> but yeah, it's very important to let people have a way to vent because like the the previous um caller, I, I'm also gay and black. You ain't about to tell me shit. You, probably y'all heard my voice and you said, oh no, another faggot. But guess what? In real life, it's going to be all teeth and you're going to keep that the table talk where it should be. But Dave Chappelle walked his ass up there and oh my God, I was so offended. No, I'm, I'm full of shit. I, I wasn't because guess what? If I'm offended, I just don't listen. 
It's that easy. But people don't want to hear that. I feel like as far as comedy, now I know you hear this right now. <laughs> now, <laughs> I feel like as far as comedy, I feel like because people do not have a sense of identity in today's society, the lack of parents being in a home because of, you know, the economy, you know, social media taking the place of the parents, children have no real um, uh, reinforcement of who they should be. The world tells them who to be. Social media tells them what to be, tells them what to feel. If someone puts a post on you, it has more weight than what your parents say because your parents are not involved in your life. So I think that's why comedy is it's dying down because the world is so sensitive and it's not realistic. We live in social media. We don't live in the real world. Remember, we talked about that before. We live in a simulation. So that's what I think. And I hope it's clear. Like at home, I'm not just rambling, but that's mm-hmm. like some of my points that I feel. And I just listen, even with Lizzo, even with Megan Thee Stallion, these people are agents of chaos. And that's how I feel. Their agenda is, is going to always be to disrupt our lives with whatever chaotic energy that they operate in because they're associated with Hollywood. Yo, what's up? Baby, Hey, tea sippers to listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.